Hey, 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 back again for another breakdown video. This is from the Jaws and the Spar Wars event. This is no time limit, no weight divisions, submission only. We had 32 white belts competing. Really cool event, one of my favorite times of the year to run this event for everybody. Great chance to do jujitsu the way it's most meant to be. That's a submission fight till someone taps out. Points don't matter. So we're going to check out a match from two of my students. One of them being Sean on the bottom and Nick on top. We're going to take a look at the match and see some things that we can improve and things that they did well and just kind of go through it and have some fun. Alright, so we start off the match here. Now right off the hop you see you see Nick doing a knee cut action. So his knee is coming through here. So it's very hard for Sean to lock on those legs here. The problem is he's doing the knee cut from an overhook. So he's not going to be able to maintain control. We're going to fast forward in a second see what he does, but you see how Sean has the underhook? He shouldn't be able to control there. Let's see if he can finish his pass. I say Sean turns inwards to his knees, and there we go. So he did a good job, but he got, Sean was able to get out. Nick couldn't ma maintain the control. Tries to take the back with a bit of an arm drag. Sean spins out and backs away. Now you notice they didn't stand up there. It's probably because it's the first round of the tournament, so we had everybody start on their knees, but regardless if you could take down or not a submission only so it doesn't really affect the game too much so he tries again very similar move tries to go to the back but he lets that arm out so he had great control except for that watch next right arm bam right there came out and enabled him to get back in so right there this was really important here so as Sean starts to kinda he loses the back position it's very important that he does not n let Nick control his head so from here he should be using this hand as a frame across the neck on the shoulder holding the hand and then blocking this arm because Nick might come down, drop his head and wrap up his head with his left arm here. We'll see if that happens here. See right there, yeah, didn't really go for total control. So what happened there, I think Nick felt like he wanted to go for total control like cross face but Sean was trying to get a cross choke so you can see kind of in here He's trying to X his hands on the gi, and it's not the best position to, 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 to do that. It takes a lot of strength. So Nick's able to kind of push out of it and fight out of it, and he kind of, Sean kind of senses that it's not the best choke from that position, so he gives up on it. Let's continue going forward. It's right there. He's still trying to choke a little bit, but Nick doesn't feel the threat, and he starts to threaten with the pass and trying to get his knee out. So it's not a bad position here. His arm's over. Looks like he's going for a Kimura and Americana on that far arm. That's Nick on top trying for the arm lock. And he gives up. And again, we kind of come back to that knee cut. So it's a great try here. But the problem is, again, he's got a great knee cut. He's an athletic guy, but he gave the underhook to Sean. So this would work very well is if Nick could get his, his arm underneath Sean's arm. So I'm going to change the color because these guys both have black geese. So Nick's arm would have to be under this arm and under this armpit and then he'd be able to pass through here and then he'd be able to pin his opponent. So I imagine that Sean's going to be able to go to his knees again and defend this knee cut pass. Let's check it out. Again he popped up, someone jumped in front, but now he's in a front headlock which is better than getting your guard pass. But let's see if Nick can control. So that's a common situ situation there. People who roll but aren't really comfortable with the front headlock position, sometimes it feels like more effort to keep the guy's head down, especially Sean's an athletic guy. So you see how Nick just kind of, all right, I got you controlled. Can't really get your back. Your hand, left hand is around my waist here. Let me clear this up. So this arm's blocking him a bit. He feels like, you know, he's going to be starting to pull his head up now. It's going to be difficult to keep him down. So he just lets him pop out. So what I would rather see here has a little different control. So I would want this arm, Nick's le uh, right arm, all the way deep and popping out in front of the shoulder here. Not not by the face, but over front of the shoulder. Then his left hand would lock palm to palm with that other hand. And now we would need to keep, I would jump my head up a bit higher so the head's here. That way your stomach's kind of over the head. Right now his kind of chest and neck is kind of over Sean's head, which is not the best control. If you could get a bit more weight down Sean's head, like more head would be more here underneath him 
you'd be able to get more control and then put pressure and start to take the back. So, but that's a tricky position. It takes a lot of details, a lot of practice, and you, even when you have a perfect position, it's still hard to hold someone's head down if they're freaking out and trying to get outs. But it definitely wears them out more and gives you an opportunity to take the back. So he kind of lets them out here, feels the athleticism there, and he's like, ah, forget it. I'm just going to go here and try to turn you over. So, okay, right there, he made a nice, nice try to turn him over. So you'll see right there, see his right hand goes underneath the armpit? Boom, right there. Now he tries to trap the other arm. So you'll see him start to trap this arm here with, with his left arm. Nick tries to trap it. He's got the underhook, and he's going to try to turn him over to his back this way. But what happens, see, he just releases the arm at the last second, and you'll see that post right there. That post saved him. So he might be able to take the back now because kind of both hands are posted. But we'll have to wait and see here. Yep, goes for the back. And I'm not sure why he was going. He kind of went back to front headlock there. Probably going for a bit of a choke hook, so he's kind of do a little. He's trying to tilt him over, maybe get a darse choke. It's a good idea. I think a better option there would probably be go behind. You know, it would have to be you know, swing behind, get the seatbelt, get control, get at all these hands trying to grab your legs. He might actually do that. We'll see. There it is there. So he spins behind, goes for the seatbelt, goes for the hooks, and he gets it. Good pressure with the back control here. Let's check his hands there a little bit. Let me back that up a bit. So just trying to see where his right hand is. Okay, so what he's doing with the right hand is trying to get the lapel. And I'll show you why that's a little tricky here. So I think he's going for a collar choke. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so for Nick here, he feels like it's a great opportunity for the collar choke, which it is. But the problem is, see this hand is underneath. Right here, it's under the armpit. And it's in the collar here. So it's impossible to choke from underneath here. You need to be over top. So you would need this arm, the left arm, left arm, over top and in the collar. So now he can cut across the neck here with his arm. The other arm's doing a good job holding the other collar. And I like to see that one under the arm on that side. So this would be over and this would be under. So pretty much just the reverse of that. But sometimes it feels like you can get the choke here, but the guy's armpit is saving him. But it's hard to tell because when you're when you're new to that position, you feel like you're actually choking their neck. So let's continue forward here. So you see him squeeze a little bit, right? He's trying to, but then he's like, I don't think this is working. So he keeps jab. Now he's trying to go behind the head. So same choke. He's trying to choke with that right arm and trying to put counter pressure behind the head. So you see that? So now he, it, he felt like the pressure wasn't enough here. So rather than the issue being that should be over, he tries to put this hand behind the head, which is actually good because now he got that underhook and counter pressure, but that armpit is still saving him here. So if he just took that hand out, went over top and got the collar, this is perfect, underneath, behind the head, great idea. And we might have had the submission there. Sean feels pretty safe here. Next a strong guy, so he's using a little bit of pressure there, trying to trying to tap him. There might be a bit of a choke there, but not on both arteries. That's the problem. That's why he's staying safe from there. So he turns in the mount. So that was transition there. So what happens is Sean did a good job of getting his back on the mat. So he put, started putting his back on the mat and Nick gets to a point where he has to decide, you know, am I going to try for the mount here? So what, you'll see this foot go over and try to mount. Right there. So what's Sean's reaction to this? See his right hand? Right here? It's not doing much. So the this should be pushing on this. It's a little late now, but should be pushing on the knee and not letting it climb over. So he can stuff it into half guard. Here, here at this point, it might be tough to do, though. He'd have to grab the ankle. But a little bit earlier, he would have stuffed that to half guard. So anytime you're escaping the back, the guy's trying to mount you, and get back in that half guard. Do not accept mount because it's pretty much just as bad as the, as the back control. Let's continue forward. So 
he gets the mount. Now he's got to fight from here. Tough position. Okay, so here, this is a, an opportunity for Sean to escape. So what I see here is I see Nick kind of in like a, not a high, high mount, not all the way on the armpits, and not a low mount here, where the feet are tucked under here and crossed. So it's a little dangerous to put one hand around the head. You see his left arm here? It's around the head. So he could get bridged to the side. His other hand also is very close. So if Sean was man managed to trap this just for a moment, he'd be able to bridge this way and get out. So he could actually bridge either way. And to prevent that, Nick would... I'd rather have him putting his feet deep here, other foot deep under the leg, crisscross the feet or keep the feet together, and then these knees kind of spread here and here, even leaving the floor, putting all the pressure with a, you know, kind of a spread leg position on the solar plexus here. And then from there now, he's free to put a hand around the head, or you can even just post both hands to the corners just to make sure he stays on top. So I think Sean from the bottom here should make an explosive movement, trap an arm and bridge as hard as he can, and... That will either get him to roll, or he'll have to post a leg out and we can get our guard back. We can get one leg out and get the guard back. So let's see how this plays out. So right now he can burst to the left. See that arm is ready to trap. Now he does it a little bit of a hook here. So you see a little bit of that hook there. Yep. So Nick sliding up into uh, sliding that knee up, trying to set up maybe an arm lock. We'll have to watch and see what he's setting up. Okay. Right there. That was a good good try. Okay, so you'll see here. He grabs the head with his left hand. He's gonna lift it up. He's gonna try to shoot his right hand right leg around the head and lock up the triangle. The problem here, I think, why Sean escaped, which was a great job by him, because this is getting near the end if you don't escape this, is you'll see that Nick put the hand down just for a moment. So he put down it for a moment, put a little pressure down just to get over the hand, and then he kind of let go. So Sean had the ability to kind of push with his hand. If you keep that a little longer, a little bit more weight on that, then you're going to be able to solidify that position while this leg gets tight and wrapped towards, uh, I would probably grab it with this hand when it comes around, this hand would grab that ankle here, and then start locking up the triangle, but he, he lets go a little bit, Sean's a strong guy, he's got good technique, and he manages to use his instincts to escape this position, so let's go forward again, see there, it's kind of pushed out back again, now we're back to that front headlock again, so let's just rehash those details, so this is obviously, there's some things that Sean can do on the bottom as well, but this is a good position for Nick. So he has to make sure he covers the head with his stomach. You see how his head's out here to the side? He would have to move his body to the side here and try to cover the head. Always try to keep the... Let me just back this up for a second here. So this position here, the head, should always be covered. Nick should move his body on top, or, and sometimes you can wedge his head, his head under with your arms as well. And again, I, I like to see this head way up here. Get a little bit more control, a little bit more weight, and then he can start spinning behind either way and taking the back. Now Sean's done a good job in the past to get out of here, just by kind of posturing out, and we'll see if he can do it again. So Nick's starting to try to go behind. Sean's doing a good job with his left hand of blocking the advancement. And they're working from here. Let's keep an eye. He tries to go behind and again. It gets a little uncomfortable. Sean just kind of pushes his way out. Good sportsmanship here. It's kind of a little bit of frustration on both, right? So he's getting caught in the front headlock. Keeps having to get out. Nick's kind of getting a good position. Then he's just kind of losing it. So, And then you have to kind of reset, reset in a neutral position here. So Sean's going for his turnover his own, but he... Gives up a bit of an underhook and Nick passes right away. So now this is a little bit later in the match now. Fatigue setting in. Let's see if if Sean can get out of this position. Nick's going for a bit of a north south choke there and he pops up to knee on his stomach.
So Nick's doing a good job. He's got his, his knee on his stomach and he's got his other leg posted out. So that's really the key details when you're learning this position is to get this nice and deep, no air between the foot and the body. And that left leg you can't see it anymore, but it's posted to the side, weight on the stomach. I like to keep my head up a little bit higher just so the more weight is generated here and making them uncomfortable rather than like putting too much weight down here because now it kind of tilts you forward, makes you vulnerable. He's trying to set up something here. So these two hands are grabbing the head. We're going to have to wait and see what that is. So he's trying to grab the head a little bit. Okay, so he was looking for the arm lock, that close arm lock. So what he was doing with his hands, if you watch, he was trying to mess around the head so that Sean would put his arm up a little high so he could throw this leg over and take the arm lock. The problem is it's not really that much of a commitment because Sean doesn't feel too threatened. Uh, what I'd rather see here, I'd rather see Nick put this hand deep in his collar, four fingers, and then start threatening with his left hand over top with the thumb in. So if you got the thumb in here, four fingers in here, now you have that X choke, you have that cross choke here. Now Sean has to deal with that second hand. So the first hand wouldn't be a problem, but the second hand would be blocked by Sean, which would raise his inside arm up a little higher. He'd be able to pass that leg over, and Nick would be able to get that, that arm lock. So we'll see Sean's able to anticipate the arm lock and pull his arm out right now. And then you kind of have to jump back. He did a great job of coming back and getting control again rather than losing position. Nice job. So now he's in the bottom of side control. So one thing you need to think about when you're in side control, it's very important that you keep your inside elbow inside the body under here. See how this is kind of sticking out? You lose that power. Now you're just kind of a one arm fighter here. So if you could get that back in. I think he's worried about the Americana or the Kimura there. Okay, did a good escape there. Tried to sit up and turn back in. Okay, so right here, Sean actually has a really good position to escape here. But it doesn't always feel like that. So you see the left hand here underneath? This is the underhook. So with that, when you have that underhook, you have the ability to start to turn inwards onto your knees, which will give you a single leg, it'll give you a waist control, it'll give you the ability to kind of grab his hip here and get up on your elbow and knees and start to escape. Problem is it feels heavy. Nick's a strong guy, big guy, good technique, and he's holding down heavy, so you just really don't, should I waste that energy? What if it doesn't work? But the big thing is you don't want to push him with your arms, never going to get tired. You want to push with your bridge. So he's going to put both feet on the floor. He's going to bridge his hips up and turn on his side hard. So this shoulder here, Sean's on the bottom, would turn and he would knock him over this way and be able to get the guard back or wrestle to a single leg or many options. But when you get that underhook, you've got to go. You can't hang on because there's also a couple counters you can do. So I would keep bridging. Now it won't be one bridge. This is not like a drill when you're just practicing. This is bridge, 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 bridge. Do not accept the position see what he does. So it, right now i got a bridge with the legs, bridge with the legs, and that cross face makes it a little tougher now, but still, if you have the underhook, you can bridge and throw him up. So with this cross face, I'll just go into a little more detail on that, is if you bridge in now, sometimes I can help, help him hold you a little bit, but if you bridge him kind of up this way, or even up this way, then he kind of loses this, and he kind of has to post it, and then you're going to be able to turn freely. So you want to always bridge up at this corner. You don't want to bridge into him, into his power, into his legs. A little crazy with my drawings there. So Nick can really benefit from getting a little bit more control with that underhook. So he's got to realize that this is this position is not under. With Sean being underneath, he cannot keep his hand this way. This hand has to. He's got to do something here. He's got to get this hand under this armpit. Sometimes that's tough to do. So what I like to do here is what I would do if I was Nick is I would turn my hand down this way so that it's hard for him to lift that underhook. Or you can even take your right hand, put it between the legs, and hug the leg underneath. You see that? So that can hold him as well. You just got to watch a triangle choke when you do that. But that can give you a lot of control, especially if Sean was really doing those bridges like we talked about. Here we go. 
especially now. Now he could bridge the line. That's the time. He almost did it there. He just didn't bridge. He just turned his shoulders instead of bridging his stomach. So Sean got to bridge that stomach over and over again. He's a strong guy. He could really definitely move his partner with the hips. Remember, the longer we stay in these bad positions, the more, you know, the more bad things can happen to us. We want to start to get work hard to get back to those positions. Now you're going for a north-south choke. Good position here. So that's when you tie up the tie up the head here, and uh, this cuts off the artery here, and the body cuts off the artery here, and the armpit kind of cuts off the wind as well. The air. This almost feels like a rear naked choke. You see, it's like the crook of your elbow. So he puts the pressure. And it's near the end of the round here, I think. And he gets the submission. I think he could even make that choke a little more tight by taking his head, instead of on the stomach, is taking it over here and putting it on the floor. And that would enable his armpit to drop even deeper into the neck. So if his head went down, his armpit would go down heavier, more of a choke. But he's doing a great job. You never want to let this head, his head look this way. You always want to have his head turn this way. I would even turn it even more, make him look this way even more, make him look into the choke with that body. And then squeeze and get the submission. So that was a, that was a great match. Let's just go over a little text here, what each guy could do. Probably change the color here. So let's do Sean. Sean, uh, it's off the top of my head. So again, he can... Worked that front headlock escape. He was able to pop out of it, but I think uh, Nick had a little bit tighter control. Would have been a much tougher time. He'd have to be a little more technical on that, so we can work the front headlock escape for him when he has the underhook. Start bridging. Bridge, bridging like crazy. Turning inwards to get out of side control. Escape, side control. Um, we'll do Nick as well here too. Let's see what we got. So Nick, front headlock control. We need to work on that one. That would really have been a dominant position there. And let's clean up those collar chokes. Since that one was under the armpit. Under armpit won't work. So he had all the principles. He just had the hands reversed, so it took a lot of strength. And like I said, sometimes it feels like it's working, but it's not. Uh, North-south choke, dropping the head, not a major thing, you can still tap him with the head on the stomach. Dropping head, and the knee cut, that was the most important, I think, that was a game changer there. So knee cut, you guys remember what we talked about? Knee cut, we have to get get the underhook, underhook before passing leg out of guard. That's one way. There are other ways as well, but if you're going to get the underhook, that's you need to get the underhook. There's also face cranking, there's shin cutting, there's a lot of different positions to pass with that, but that's the good starter one is get that underhook and cut just like he did. He's just got to get the underhook, otherwise Sean can turn out. And I think another one for Sean is let's, let's, let's not settle for those bad positions. Now put the work in. When you put the work in in those bad times, you're going to get back in a good position and make them work. Otherwise, they're going to chance to rest when they're mounted on you. And it went in danger, let's put. When they're mounted on you, or they have their your side control, or they have the back, you're working and they're they're resting. So that's the time to put the work in. So, but I thought that overall that was a great match. Two competitive guys. I'm not sure how they... Uh, they both actually did pretty well in the tournament. And, uh, yeah, I would think if we clean up a few of those details, we're going to do even better. So, great job, guys, and I look forward to your next breakdown video.